Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however watching, welcome back to the dojo. I'm Ryu. He's Age. We're back for more anime night in the dojo. And yes, this is an anime now. <laughs> Ruby, Ice Queendom, Season 1, Episode 1. And, uh, well, it's cool to be doing Ruby again. We, uh, we talked about doing the sub, and then just because we thought we might have to do it. And then, you know, they're like, oh yeah, it's gonna be simulcast. You guys don't have to worry about a fucking thing. Sorry about swearing. But, uh, for anyone who followed the drama, uh, Murder, Murder Birds, the uh, big time uh, Ruby reactor, um, I'm sure most of you probably know him. Um, I saw a couple tweets from him and he was, um, not happy is the nice way to put this, uh, with the Rooster Teeth staff. And I kind of did some digging and holy crap, did the Rooster Teeth side just drop the ball on getting their VAs into where they needed to have this simulcast. Like, whoever... I, I'm not going to name names. I don't even remember the name, honestly. But I, I was looking at what, like, the support staff posted and stuff like that, and it was just completely unacceptable. You know what I mean? They, they, they made it sound like this was, like, moving heaven and earth to get this simulcast done. It's just like, no... Cool. <laughs> One of the reasons why Rooster Teeth's been having so much problems in general lately, like why, why Achievement Hunter has been in like full pre-record town for a while now, and very little of anything coming out of them is apparently they are moving. They were moving studios, right? And and have been for months now, but things keep fucking up with that apparently. Yeah, I get that, and causing but, massive delays you know, on everything they're doing. At the end of the day, they could have just used you know not their studio for the vas you know what i mean or, or at I'm least just saying i'm just saying yeah. that's a, apparently a big cause of why there's so much shit going on with bruce teeth in general like across the board oh yeah i mean I... apparently they're in the process of a really big move that keeps having more and more delays and problems to it right and i can get that but at the end of the day you know what i mean in the case of Ruby, it was, you know, an, an English show first, right? And I'm sure the Japanese VA cast did a fantastic job. I'm not here to argue dubs versus subs. But you have to, you know, understand that in this case, the predominant fan base was going to be English speaking. And putting them 12 weeks behind is unacceptable. At that point, yeah. you just push the simulcast back to you can get the dub out at the same time. You know? <laughs> You know, you're mentioning it, freaking. Now that I think about it, there's been a Japanese voice cast ever since, like, around uh, volume three ish. <clears throat> uh, like, Ruby got an official, like, airing in Japan and they did Japanese voice cast to it. But despite having watched this entire series some, like, three dozen times, I've never actually gone and watched the Japanese version. Hmm. Like, I just, it never just ha it just never happened. Yeah, sometimes you just, you just kind of don't have time for it. But my, my whole point of this is, you know, this could have been handled far better. And the amount of just, like, big-time companies dropping the ball recently. But it, it's nothing new, you know. I'm sure everybody has a horror story about customer service from every industry out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the, at the end of the day... You know, for the fan base, I, and I've seen plenty of, you know, the only thing you can really do is read the people who bother to post on forums, you know what I mean? You're never going to no really know how people who don't post on forums feel about something, you know what I mean? That's why polls for anything aren't 100% accurate unless you get 100% of the people, you know what I mean? Those 17,000 people or whatever number you want to use over there that had, a, you know, a, say a negative reaction to whatever it is, you know, that cake place, that, that restaurant, whatever, that show, you know what I mean? Just because those 17,000 people had a negative reaction, how do you know about, you know, if if, if they had 17,000, you know, people responding to something or posting on a forum, they could have had 50,000 customers and the other 30,000 could have enjoyed it. You know what I mean? But they just mm -hmm. didn't post on the forum. So you always got to take that stuff with a grain of salt. But the stuff that I've read, you know, most people were just saying, yeah, they're just going to wait for the dub. And so I, I really think they, they missed the hype train on this especially leading into the whole point of what I'm going on here about is this 
we and we talked about it when we watched the trailer a couple months back and we when we put that video up is um the teams working on this show you know all the big names i can throw them up there you know put them up on a list you know i'll put it in the edit we and we talked about it studio shaft them alone is a big deal but all the other yeah. big time names working on this and yeah sure you know you, you got to take that how it is you know sometimes you know very talented individuals do leave uh, companies and you know like bethesda isn't the way it used to be or blizzard or bioware you know those kind of things so you can't I mean, always yeah, take the company still. name for what it is it, it's the it's the t individual teams and the individuals that were part of that but in this case you know we haven't seen anything bad out of all these big time things in quite some time. You know what I mean? Or if ever. So they, they have probably have a bigger vetting process than say like, you know, how we make fun of Blizzard or Bioware or Bethesda for dropping the ball in the gaming world. So, you know, Shaft is always been pretty goddamn reliable about putting out good shit. Like for it. their two other biggest shows, like I've mentioned is Madoka Magica and Monogatari. Monogatari though I still have never gotten around to going back to finishing it because it's a long-ass show, is I still consider it to be one of my favorite anime. All right. Um, and in general, like... <laughs> but in general, like, yeah, you do have to kind of pay attention to the exact names. Like, that's one of the reasons why I we haven't got around to watching it yet, but I have actually been rather hyped to get around to watching Edge Runners at some point because that's being done by Studio Trigger, but not sp not... Not a, not only is it being done by Studio Trigger, it's specifically it's being done predominantly by the main part of the crew that did Gurren Logan, Kill la Kill, and Little Witch Academia. Indeed. But Gurren Logan, I never really got around to watching, but is considered to be like one of the best anime of all time. Kill la Kill is one of my favorite anime of all time, and Little Witch Academia is still pretty damn amazing. All right. So. Point is, long story short here is, all, all the big names that are working on this, just behind the brand names, the brand names are big deals and are very solid. You know what I mean? So this has the potential, and I talked about this uh, in the uh, in the like trailer review that we did, that it has the potential to be like this year's Arcane. You know what I mean? Just because we know the story, and, and we talked about that too, is how this could potentially focus on, more on Weiss and more other things. And we have, I have seen some screenshots and stills of the sub when it was coming out. And like, you know, um, without spoilers, I have seen some things, just like still images and stuff like that. I, I pretty much avoided as much spoiler as I can. But there is definitely original content in this, like we discussed potentially revolving around Weiss and stuff like that. So I, I assume that we're going to get predominantly the major highlights of season one, while just a bunch of stuff that, you know, maybe Monty might have wanted to add, that kind of stuff that was left on the cutting room floor of season one before Ruby took off um, and was a bigger deal at Rooster Teeth. So it'll be interesting to see how that's handled. You know what I mean? Miles and Carrie have stated multiple times that there was plenty of stuff that they wanted to do in season one, but either had to cut entirely or push to later seasons, like point in case. The apathy was literally the first grim design Miles ever came up with, and he wanted them in season one, but they just couldn't find any way to actually fit them in thematically, so they had to push him back all the way till freaking road trip. Right, and we we can say this since we did see the the subtitle, like the the final the twelfth episode of Ice Queendom is like the food fight episode, like best day ever. Yeah. So that's so based on that. Um, you know, season one of Ruby was like two-ish hours, like an hour and 45, two hours, something like that. Um, and just like say in movie form, but this is going to be 12 full length episodes, meaning there's going to be far more time invested than like a two hour movie in a, in a one yeah. core season. Yeah. The fact that, uh, the finale is best day ever gives us an actual timeline going into this, knowing that this is all supposed to take place within season one because it ends at the start of season two. Right. So so we know that, but um, again, just based on the big names that are working on this, I have high expectations. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, and I've said this plenty of times before, I, I usually go into into things without, you know, having my hopes like, you know, oh man, this is going to be awesome. And then I, you know, I'd rather be pleasantly surprised than disappointed. But in this case, 
just based on just the big deal they made out of, out of it and the big names working on it it does have that like arcane potential you know what i mean and by them dropping the ball with the simulcast of the dub i really think they lost out on something you know what i mean uh, especially since it took you know 12 weeks for them to get the dub going um they they might have lost a lot of the fanfare you know what i mean sure it's great for the the sub audience and i'm again i'm not here to argue dubs and subs i'm sure the vas were fantastic i i recognized a couple of the japanese vas it, i'm sure it's fine but for the people who only watch dubs for various reasons myself included and especially in the western audience where the predominant Prom, pre, blah, 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 predominant amount of fans are it's a bad it's it's bad for business you know what i mean and, and i'd hate to see that um potentially if this was really good hurt a potential future of like studio shaft and all these fantastic people like you know just making the ruby series in anime form and adding to it however they did in season one like for the full length of the series however long the main series goes you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I have no clue if it's still on the table, but I remember hearing when this was first coming out that the end goal intention was to hopefully like redo at very least the entirety of Beacon arc right. eventually. But then once again, that's entirely subject to how well the show actually does. Right. So again, it, it definitely has massive potential. I'll say that. I'm looking forward to it. I can't imagine it's going to be bad. But if it is... We'll say so. <laughs> Don't worry. While we do try like try to try to be upbeat around here and not try to just shit on everything because it's easy. Um once sub stuff deserves to be called out, we're gonna call it out. I mean we've been calling out Overlord here for the last couple weeks and stuff like that. I mean, we had a field day with Tokyo Avengers. So, you know Apart from the first season we did of this. Like of actually doing anime, not uh no, I guess even the first season could still be considered. We've always had at least one show that we have at least some sort of significant gripe with. Like the first season, it was Subaru Subaruing. Then it was uh, Tokyo Revengers, then Faraway Paladin, and now it's Overlord. Right. I guess we should just be happy that it's only one thing at a time, especially since now we're slotting Ruby into the Saturday slot for the next 12 weeks. So for the next five weeks we have six videos a week so hopefully people are excited for that just means uh more recording time for us so you know we like doing it so either way whatever um but going into this one i i assume it's just going to be like the first uh, bit of the uh you know first season you know them arriving at beacon you know all that stuff um it'll just be interesting to see how far they get in one episode you know what i mean to kind of gauge how much of it they're going to try to do yeah, we're at very least get, getting Are You Robbing Me? <laughs> and and then probably at least some introduction to the school, like uh, Jean and the like introductory speech that Ozben gives or something like that. Right. So yeah, um, sorry for the long-winded intro, but that's probably as much as we're really going to discuss about this first episode other than, you know, what they added to possibly changed a little bit, but... Um, we're probably yeah. gonna have more to say when the like original like new content uh pops up in the show yeah i can't imagine there will be all that much original content just in this first episode right and just for the sake of whatever um i'm just gonna edit this like we do every other anime and not like our ruby reaction where we leave the entire episode in because while this is a first member only thing um and it'll probably go up on youtube or crunchyroll wherever um in the dub form um it probably doesn't fall under the rooster teeth umbrella of whatever so you know <laughs> yeah they don't have exclusive rights to this yeah so you know anyway um i got nothing else going into this age yeah no I, like i said i don't expect like they'll probably change at least some things but i don't expect any sort of significant new content just in this first episode or so i'm pretty sure we're probably gonna more or less get scene for scene uh the original season one all the way up to like run the nevermore fight or so and then we'll probably we'll, we'll start getting a lot of original stuff fair enough 
All which, right. with, this being, with this being full length, that'd probably be somewhere around like the end of episode two, maybe some maybe episode three, if they really do push it back and do add some sort of original content. Right, because you know, since season one was about two hours ish, I mean, you got to figure after two episodes, that's forty eight minutes of runtime already. Mm -hmm. So you know. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm pretty excited for this. So let's push some buttons and see what happens. So here goes something. Also, while we haven't really gotten much of anything in the way of original content, this is all stuff that wasn't in season one. It's stuff that was added, like, in the manga after the fact, and incorporating like, stuff from, like, the trailers. The Scar, which confused many people for years because they didn't understand how frickin' Aura worked. All right. Everyone insisted that it was just a passive shield, not something really you have to actively concentrate on the and can therefore get caught off guard trolls. with. The humans fear the white thing too much to face us. But since we're doing the full trailers and everything like that, we're this probably gonna end messy. with Are You Robbing Me? Rather than actually getting to the school. Don't have too much fun. thing I will say. Adam's horns actually look like horns in this. They didn't really make him look like horns in the 3D until like the last freaking season he was in. Not how big the city of Vale is. It's way more fun than Patch Island. They've got the best music. Oh, and the cafe. Oh, they look like Rock Shooter. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> and I still have to get a gift for Yang too. Huh? Rumor has it she's secretly buying you a going away present, Yang. They even got yeah, Bernie into the booth, huh? <laughs> I mean, he, when he left Rooster Teeth, he did say that he was still going to play Ty. Oh, good for him. I really hope Ruby will be okay without me around. He actually gave him his grappling cadence early. You know, to make more sense of how he got up the building so quickly. It would have been hilarious if they did the shadow people thing. <laughs> I was just going to say, you made it and there's not even any shadow people to welcome her. Thanks, Dad. Okay, for you and Mom and Uncle Crow, I'll try my hardest. Not much time for friends, though. But I can't wait. I'll be as good as... Oh, man, are we going to squeak in Vomit Boy right at the end of the first episode? <laughs> That's the spirit. Well, that's that, and hey, they're redoing season two with the uh, fan art. How about that? That's a solid callback. Um, disappointed that they didn't do the shadow people. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? <laughs> just, you know. Even if it was just like as a joke in this scene. And like they didn't continue it for the whole thing. But yeah, like, if it was just like just right here, it would have been freaking hilarious. <laughs> Just, just one time. Obviously, they're not going to do it for the full time because, you know, whatever. Yeah. But just, come on. <laughs> you know, I was saying, don't, don't keep it up for, like, the whole season, but at least for this, like, br quick scene of just seeing the crowd on the airship, at least, have them be the shadow people. Just to take a freaking crack at it. Yeah, like, if this right here was just, just a bunch of shadow people instead. Of, I mean, they kind of did it with, like, the faceless thing, but, I mean, you know, that's... Um, a lot of anime do that with um, non-major characters, uh, just background characters and stuff that's like very out of focus. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that's not surprising. But man, I was thinking, it, it, I, I was thinking to myself, man, that'd be hilarious if they did it, but they didn't do it. That's why I called it out. But unsurprising in a way. But man, would have been funny just just one time. <laughs> But um, as it stands, pretty much just the beginning of the, the show in general. Um, all, basically all the trailers, they, 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 like, they merged all the trailers into this episode, except for Yang's. We didn't get the club sequence, that would have been yeah, we cool. Didn't get, we didn't get Yang or Ruby. Um, 
which like i said they i'm pretty sure they wouldn't have done ruby anyway because ruby's was just a fight scene that's that has no actual story relevance right yang's they could still be waiting to do later because if i recall correctly it's never really like officially stated where in the chronology of season one it takes place right that could have been just, after they get to beacon at some point yeah we just know that it happens at some point in season one because in season two she meets junior and they've already met right so yeah i'm sure all the torchwood people are super excited about this <laughs> torchwick's yeah. back in town could have more torchwick voiced please, by please. uh the guy who does clover uh we looked it up um and also for just ra random other anime stuff, Aizawa, Eraserhead from MHA. So that's a mm -hmm. pretty big pull. So I, I can't imagine there would be too many people uh, mad about that uh, casting. Um, but honestly, there, there's not much to say about this for the moment because this is exactly what I expected. I haven't seen animation this clean in quite some time. And there was no lazy CGing to fall back on. <laughs> they they were weaving CG in there, but for the most part, it was all really brief and not so like blatant. That, in your like, face, like the Quagoa thing from earlier <laughs> this week. I mean, if it's, yeah. I believe uh, we were talking during that sequence. So if you guys load up the Overlord reaction, you can see what kind of CG we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah. No, like I said, Shaft in general, like they've always done really spectacly fights like monogatari has some really freaking spectacly fights in it when they actually do do fights which is usually only like once a season maybe right. twice um and i mean like you've seen madoka freaking uh homer homer versus mommy that whole freaking fight in the movie it's just one giant spectacle Oh yeah, so I, I fully expect something like the Nevermore fight to be ridiculous. Yeah. So um, j just just based on my favorite sequence in this episode here was Blake's sequence. That was like the cleanest thing I've seen in quite some time. Just everything about it just screamed, you know, like Ninja, Blake kind of thing. Just the mm -hmm. slashing, everything was just super clean. Like, um, yeah, and that's the one thing I guess you can appreciate about Shaft in general. Um, is that well? They do. There is that like anime norm for the uh, for the industry of like this is how most animation and like most most shows look relatively the same. You know what I mean? You know, mm. like the Isekai Quartet. They're, they they you know Overlord Konosuba, uh, Tanya, um, Shield Hero, that stuff. It all very very incredibly similar art styles for that. You know what I mean? For this. You can tell the difference and appreciate it in the color vibrancy, the line work, you know, just just stuff like uh, I, I had it there for a second. I could probably find it again, but uh, just like in in Torchwick's henchmen, like their sunglasses, the the touch that they took, uh, you, you can see you can kind of see it here, but it, in the initial thing I had it on, um, yeah, right here this just the attention to detail in their sunglasses right here alone since we're more focused on their faces is, is impressive and you don't get that all the time um not saying that yeah. the the other hand-drawn stuff is bad per se by any stretch of the imagination it's fine and it's done well but for this this is what kind of like sets it apart over here you know what I mean? Like, you can tell the difference yeah. between, like, what the industry standard would be, you know, for those shows, for shows like MHA, that kind of stuff. All, all the art in that is clean and fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But it, it's subtle, artistic touches like this that make a difference. Shaft's all about the, the little details and hiding stuff in plain sight. Like that, like I said, <laughs> Monogatari is one of those kind of shows that you typically have to rewatch at least three or four times in order to actually fully catch everything because of just how much shit is hidden in the scenes or that flashes up on screen for only like a quarter of a second right and since the word of the week for us has been the little things again the stuff that i mentioned look at the, look at the lighting backdrop coming off the lighting behind torchwick's head you know what i mean it's nearly perfectly executed so it 
it's that kind of stuff that I need to draw attention to because it's that damn impressive. You know what I mean? Um, so if this is what we're going to be getting, I can't imagine anybody's going to have a problem with this. You know what I mean? Um, so. Yeah, I, I don't doubt the animation at all. Like I said, going into this, I know what Shaft is capable of. Um, the only thing that really is potentially questionable is just going to be story direction with like original content and putting stuff in like they literally zero obfuscation just say Blake's upon us in this episode right which is normally not revealed in the main show until episode 11 out of 12 right <laughs> so uh but but you, you got to take it how it is because this is kind of like a like a remaster remake in a mm. way so it, yeah. it's kind of like um you know, I'm sure I don't remember everything. I'm going to go through it again. But like in the Final Fantasy VII remake, they made nods to things that people knew from later in the story because you probably yeah. already knew it. You know what I mean? In general, this so far has been better at the storytelling in general. It's including more that should have been there in the first place. It's further establishing the characters, which limited resources they couldn't budget in the first, in the first season yeah, plus budget. also <laughs> plus also there's stuff that didn't actually even come into the storyboarding until later seasons that they are basically retconning in here uh like there's plenty of characters that weren't introduced until like way later or even three the uh miles and carrie and them even came up with until much later Exactly. So again, little things. You can see the night reflected in her eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be everywhere, and I'm going to point it out because it warrants pointing out because that's how impressive attention to detail is for things like this. Sure, it could have just been her eye, but you know how much more attention to detail that adds just to the sequence when you notice it? It's a big damn deal and should be applauded, honestly. So, um, you know. Well, while, you know, I don't like to sit here and kiss ass all the time, uh, I, I will point out when stuff goes that extra mile for the attention to detail that just adds that much more to a sequence. Um, obviously, it's hard to notice in live action, but, you know, usually when we're talking about shows, I go through and I try, I try to mentally remember, okay, there could have been something here, and I did land on it, because apparently my RNG is just that damn good. <laughs> But, yeah, apart um, from that, really, all we got was basically just some anime original filler. Not necessarily filler, but, like, in-between scenes that, like, fill the gaps right. that we had in the original show. Like, Ty and Ozpin talking to each other, getting more of that, getting some of the, like, actual conversations between Weiss and her dad and her sister and stuff. Right. That, like, were things that we knew existed and knew happened, but were never shown in the show. Right. They were, all stuff that was, they were all stuff that was like from the trailers, the character shorts, uh, the manga, uh, all sort of external sources from the main show. Right. So, yeah, this was uh, pretty damn impressive. Um, the other thing I will say on, on the soundtrack side of things, while it's obviously not Jeff Williams and his daughter, um, it had that vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they kept pretty on theme musically for this though it is yeah it's a different composer and uh singer which from what i remember they're pretty big deals you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i don't remember who exactly it was but i do remember i mean maybe. everybody knows lisa okay i'm pretty <laughs> sure that while it's not lisa it's up there you know what i mean so it's um again it's maybe not like the near composer um but still not like they're the only composers that are very good. But again, across the board, to reiterate, um, the teams that worked on this from, you know, art direction, animation, sound, all of it are top of the industry. So expecting anything less than a, uh, you know, like a 90 out of 100 would be, you know, insane. You know what I mean? <laughs> It'd be su very surprising. Yeah, and I wouldn't, you know, in the, in these cases, it'd be surprising to see them put their name on it. You know, you know what I mean? If they didn't do a good job, you know what I mean? So, uh, if, if this is what we can expect, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Um, once again, the, the only problem that I have with it is that 
they logistics drop the ball it is that simple you know what i mean um for something like this i, I think they hopefully not having the simulcast will not hurt future production of this if they want to keep it going you know what i mean so uh we'll just have to see um you know we uh we ended on uh them going on the uh the airship to beacon um i assume at some point we'll get into the more uh, original stuff because there's i'm sure they're going to show literally everything that was in season one for the most part um in some way shape or form and yeah then, uh, i mean then it's got to be you know bare minimum seven out of the 12 episodes worth of runtime are going to be uh, original stuff Plus, they're also, you know, changing some of the original stuff. Like, for example, we didn't get the Cinder versus Glinda fight in this one, and so on and so forth. Right. It was very muted, just kind of Cinder retaliate, or like, not really retaliating, but just kind of, you know, negating the shots from inside the plane, which mm -hmm. interesting. But, uh, yeah. Not, not a huge amount to say about this other than the stuff that we talked about at the beginning. Um, this is a this is exactly what I'd expect out of the uh, the names that were put on this project. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And as far as next episode goes, we'll probably get some in uh, some original interaction between some of the characters, like since they are already like showed Nora, Red, and Pira all that in this episode. They'll right. probably get some actual interaction uh, next episode, right? Prior to the locker scene. Yeah. Well, one uh, thing I will say though is, um, just on the whole, like bringing back, well, not really bringing back, but the fact that we're going to get to see more Pira stuff potentially because of how fan favorite of a character she was. It'll be interesting to see if at any point they um, make her mother, I, which I assume it was her mother that we saw in Volume Six, I believe, when they were in uh, Atlas. It was never, I'm pretty sure it was never actually confirmed. She's always just referred to as the lady in red. Right. Whichever, what most people, so it was like, there was a really big split in the community. There were people who thought it was her mother or her sister. And then there were people who insisted that it was some like Pira-esque entity that John was just seeing. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that she just like up and disappears randomly and, uh, once again, Sean is based off of Joan of Arc, and a big part of her thing was hearing voices that weren't there. Right. So yeah, that that's just the, that's kind of the one thing that I'm kind of wondering about, just because of um, not how lacking of Pira there was. You know what I mean? Uh, there was still a lot they could have done. With they, her. Yeah, exactly. So um, I assume she'll be one of the characters that gets more uh, screen time as this beacon arc goes. Um, you know, because that was the original intention is for them to redo the entirety of the beacon arc. Um, but who knows, depending on how this goes, they might just re you know, do the entire series in anime form. You mm. know. But uh either way, very, very solid start. So that's all I got. <laughs> you got anything else, Age? Um No, like I said, this this is a more solid actual introduction to the characters than we got in the prime in the actual like main show. So, if people were holding out on watching Ruby, this is a uh, probably going to be a better introduction to it than uh, right. going back and watching the original volume one. Right. And this was uh, something we talked about during the trailer where, you know, if anybody was hesitant on the show for whatever reason, um, I, I assume that look, this this is a very, very good interpretation of uh, just the first uh, scenes in general. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, this, this this first episode at very least obviously still can't speak for the rest of the show. We haven't watched it yet. This first episode, at very least, uh, does a lot better of a job establishing the characters and their motivations and so on uh, than the original show did. Right. But at the end of the day, that was budget. Plain and simple. Yeah. 
for, for the longest time. And then with the advent of Monty's death, that caused a different kind of problem. So we, we talked about that in the past. We're leaving that in the past. That is what it is. But, um, you know, I'm sure Monty would be proud of this project, just especially in this first episode, if this first episode is any indication of how this entire series is going to go. So, I mean, that was like his original goal with Ruby was basically just that he wanted to create a Western anime. Right. And, well, <laughs> it's now anime. Right. So. Granted, it's not being made by a Western company, but it's still a Western IP being made into anime. Which, as far as I know, is... um first of its kind not entirely like there are uh there's plenty of games that get turned into anime. western games that get turned into anime i mean i just i brought up edge runners at the beginning of this um but for shows yeah it's pretty rare for show uh, for shows to get an anime adaptation right i mean another example is freaking morty's getting an anime right <laughs> yeah if Rick and Morty can get an anime, then, you know, why not? I'm not saying Rick and Morty's bad, but, you know, we've had discussions about that fan base and all that, but that's a discussion <laughs> for a completely other video, and we're not getting into that. So, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was Ruby, Ice Queendom, Season 1, Episode 1. And I think this is going to be pretty damn solid. So, uh... Looking forward to next week. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you to watch. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.